So our mission for Solar Cities as a nonprofit is to work on helping people discover what is a relatively forgotten, appropriate uh, technology, which is small-scale biogas. We are all familiar with small-scale biogas on a very personal level in the sense that each one of us have our own biodigester systems already built in as we digest our food. Every single day we are biodigesting. So what we do is we coordinate with our local partners and around the world to help empower people to build their own biodigester systems using our open source design. The system that we actually built at the University of Notre Dame. If you look on the right, you'll see the biodigester. I teach all of my students how to do the ASL sign for I love you because then in your hand you actually have the design of a biodigester which is overflow, feeding, and gas. Those are like the three pipes of the three elements of the biodigester itself. And on the left, you'll see that floating gas system that George shared with you. We really want our design to be a good user experience for the people who are going to be working with these, what we call here in the States, these domestic dragons. And we want it to be proficient. So the first thing I'd like to do with our students is talk about patterns and what makes our biogas bio teacher program special is the first thing I do is always remind everybody about some of the forgotten arts, the arts that we take for granted, which is the art of caregiving, the art of farming, the art of medicine, you know, how, what we need to do to take care of ourselves when we're sick. And all of these things put together, asking appropriate questions, helps people to reconnect not only to themselves, but to the resources in their communities that they need to make biogas and biogas applications, you know, appropriate and accessible. So with our students, we do something what I call a resource tour and also getting to meet our kitchen staff at the university as our starting point because these are the women that we are going to be empowering and learning from them, taking the time to listen to their stories and looking at their patterns of use. So we start always well, we start in the kitchen whenever we're thinking about installing a biodigester and looking at what they're already doing. They have what I call the ideal situation in which they are already using propane. Propane is very easy to retrofit to biogas just by simply removing the high pressure valve. So that was great. They're already used to using propane. So that is a very simple change, not a drastic change for them. They're already cutting, you know, the, um, they're already like using a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables and so all of those scraps from like the peelings they already have up, chopped up fine wonderful something else that we don't need to do a big change with next thing I go to look for oh look they are uh, washing the dishes right outside where they are chopping the vegetables that is fantastic because what can we do we can take that dirty dish water and we could put that together with those chopped food scraps and that can be the food for our biodigester. Not a big change that we're doing here. And last, where is the food that scraps that they're currently processing going? They're going into a heap behind the kitchen. Now, the, the chickens were eating those scraps. And at first I was like, oh my goodness, I don't want to starve the chickens. But then somebody reminded me, like, you know, chickens, they just go wherever they can find the food. And this is a beautiful multi-acre property at the university. So the chickens free-ranged everywhere, so they, they had plenty of food with fruit trees. So I was not concerned about, you know, depriving the chickens. Because all we have to do for changing this pattern is putting two things together, the food scraps and the dishwater together, and then changing the pattern and instead of dumping the food scraps in the back of the kitchen, they're then going to go instead into the biodigester simple changes and most effective by putting the people that you know we are working for in the center.
With our students, we do everything with hands-on learning. I am not a biodigester builder. I am a biodigester teacher. So the first thing I always teach our students is um, basic safety with uh, using power tools, wearing gloves, getting them used to wearing goggles. It was a really special experience working with the women in the program because a lot of them, this was their first time using power tools and you could kind of like see the hands like shaking a little bit with the, you know, the PVC cutters. And I really felt like it was necessary to create that opportunity and space for them where they could have that chance to use those tools. And, you know, one story I like to share is I didn't realize at one point during um, my class I gave the universal signal for all the women that I am going to a woman's only space. If you have a question you want to ask me, I'm going to a woman's only space right now. I said, I'm going to the ladies' room. <laughs> And wouldn't you know, like six of them followed me into the ladies' room to ask me questions. And I realized we have to be doing a better space for women rather than just having to default to the ladies' room. But it's still a great place to start because you talk about, you know, even our human waste from the toilets being able to go into the biodigesters and how we as women, we can reclaim our bathrooms and our kitchens for the health of all of us. So looking at our resources that we have, thinking about sustainability of the program, I want my students to absolutely know where their resources are. So, so right away I teach them about where you're building this biodigester, where you're going to get the water from. And you know, we had a you know a great big cistern next to the kitchen and you know, just thinking about like will we have enough water for the women to cook if we were to use the water from this tank and then learning that we could pump more up there so that was great. Um, going to the hardware store, looking for the right kind of tools, the right kind of parts, where we get the manure from, and then thinking about what are going to be the new patterns we're going to be using. Like we could be using the biogas for a generator which they regularly use. We could be using it for the stove. and. All this wonderful liquid gold that we're going to be getting, all this wonderful nutrient-rich fertilizer, let's think about how we're going to use this on the garden at the University of Notre Dame. They also want to be adding on an agricultural program for you know what they're for their current programming. So this program is so special because they're doing this both and approach for both energy and agriculture at the same time.